Bluff State's campus is the only place in western New York where you can get Argo tea, a healthy alternative to Starbucks. The assault was reported through an anonymous forum on UPD's website. Details like the description of the assailant or where the incident occurred are not required on the forum. For the Buffalo Review, I'm Francesca Bond. There was a lot of negative feedback last time around due to overnight construction, so this time they're only working during the day. For Channel 2, I'm Francesca Bond. People in Buffalo have been complaining all season that spring hasn't sprung, but here at the first food truck Tuesday of the year, you wouldn't even know. As you can see, the building is covered in detailed paintings, all painted by Jeremy Twist, an artist who never painted before in his life until now. Your morning commute may become a little slower over the next few months when construction on the eastbound I-290 begins. The $6.7 million renovation will take place over the next two years, completely replacing interstate bridges starting with the eastbound bridge. The usual three lanes will be reduced to two, with crossover lanes created to help traffic flow. Susan Serde, the Regional Public Information Officer for the State DOT, says they are doing what they can to make sure traffic won't be too affected. Once people get used to it, um, I don't think it's going to be, um, you know, Commuters adjust very well, so we're hoping that it goes very smoothly and that we can accomplish the eastbound bridge this construction season and the westbound bridge next construction season. The DOT held an open hall today for the public to come voice their concerns and ask questions. Connie Emmerling, a partner at the BAC Women's Athletic Club, worries that her members may have a hard time turning out of her gym because of the increased flow of traffic. Yeah, we just have a high volume workout facility that we're just making sure that people get out safe and get back home. There's no left turn on to Colvin from our entrance. Beth Hotchkiss, a local resident, said she will have to change her route entirely due to a time crunch between dropping her child off at a babysitter's and making it to work. So I'll have to completely do an alternate route in the morning for getting on because it's not going to be an option for me. And so I, this way I'm also more prepared for the change in traffic patterns. There was a lot of negative feedback last time around due to overnight construction, so this time they're only working during the day. For Channel 2, I'm Francesca Bond. The Tabernacle, a bar and restaurant conjoined with popular West Side Cafe Sweetness 7, is opening on Grant Street. The restaurant is opening in an old church, and there are religious touches to hint at it, aside from the Sistine Chapel-like paintings, but we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. The Tabernacle isn't going to be just an ordinary restaurant, however, it will focus heavily on live music, and it feels like an art gallery. Now, back to those paintings. As you can see, the building is covered in detailed paintings, all painted by Jeremy Twist, an artist who never painted before in his life until now. As he wrote paint, he called me at night and he said, I have an idea, can I paint? And I said, yeah, go for it. And he goes, wow, oh, what if it looks like crap or whatever he said. And I said, well, it's paint. We just paint over it. Don't worry about it. Paintings are pretty hard to ignore. Unique, colorful artwork covers every inch of the walls and ceilings in the place. Twist was a cook for Moran at Sweena 7, but was getting burned out. Moran knew he needed a change of scenery, so she enlisted him to help her paint the place and get it ready. Then he had an idea. I didn't know what to say. I started laughing. I actually started crying. I was like, wait. <laughs> he just, actually, the first thing I said was, there are breasts on my ceiling. And he started laughing. And he goes, you told me I could do what I wanted. And I was like, no, no. It's... Moran, a mom and former art teacher, had no idea it would look like this. Chris doodled here and there, but she never knew he had the chops yeah, to do this. She now compares him to Michelangelo. Juliana Tutrone will be managing the tabernacle and marvels its uniqueness. I just moved here, so I'm not sure of how many bars are in this area, kind of similar to this, but I could imagine not very many. The tabernacle's menu will be small for both food and drinks. There will be a couple fine liquors, a few choices of beer, a couple different wines to choose from, along with some menu items. Moran wants it to be simple, and most importantly, she wants to bring the community together through music. Much of the seating is communal, encouraging people to sit by strangers and strike up conversation. For the Buffalo Review TV, I'm Francesca Bond. People in Buffalo have been complaining all season that spring hasn't sprung, but here at the first Food Truck Tuesday of the year, you wouldn't even know. Arkin Square's weekly event brings thousands to the area throughout the whole summer, giving them plenty of time to try a lot of the food. Andrew Thur's favorite, an Asian fusion truck. So like Gourmetian, I don't think they have their truck here today, but that was really good last year. The sixth season for Larkin's food trucks, and this year, they're rotating 28 trucks at a time each week. Over 10 more trucks will be parked at Flying Bison next door. Trucks come all the way from Rochester to participate and serve up some food. Catherine Pratt describes the event as buffalo-like. It's such a buffalo thing, seeing all the food trucks come into one very small area and get food. And people come out, it's cold today, we're still out getting our food. There's nothing more buffalo than that. Buffalonians are no fan of heart, especially when it comes to our food. 
Despite the unseasonably low temperatures, many people showed up and ate up. This is actually like pretty warm for us so far, so I'm here. Larkinville has become quite the destination recently, with the recent addition of Swan Street Diner near the square, in case you're still hungry. For the Buffalo Review TV, I'm Francesca Bond. Buffalo State's United Students Government, or USG, makes a lot of decisions around here, and this week, students are heading to the union to elect their new leaders. It's important to vote in any elections, but here it's, here it's the start. Here, it's, here you're helping any government, any potential government employee that really has a passion for government is taking the initiative to be here. This year, USG is handing out flyers for students to better understand who's running. They include a detailed outline of the students' goals along with a photo of their face. We, we're giving them each one with their ballot and uh, to help them take time to look. M many students already know who they want to vote for because they're, they, they know the folks that are running. They use the student activity fee of $75 collected every semester and spread it between clubs, events, and a huge concert every year called Springfest. I like to see them push more to fixing, fixing up the campus, maybe perhaps pursue the college to get more services such as Snowplowing. This year, less than 600 students voted in the elections, which may not sound like a lot given Buffalo State's large student body, but is actually an average turnout compared to recent years. For the Buffalo Review, I'm Francesca Bond.